Welcome to the tutorial on solubility rules. So we're going to quickly review solubility rules and see how these relate to precipitation reactions. It's the most important reaction that deals with solubility rules. So you don't need to memorize the solubility rules, but here's, here's the, uh, the cheat sheet that I will provide you with on exams that show the different solubility rules and how they relate. So what we have is the uh, salts or the ionic compounds that tend to be soluble are on the left side and the ones that tend to be insoluble are on the right side. But there's a directionality to the, the way this chart works. right? So we have to follow the arrows. And which direction the arrow points might show us when there's exceptions. So something that might be insoluble when we think it's soluble, or vice versa. So let's illustrate how this, how this chart works with a few examples. Let's start with lead nitrate. All right, there's lead nitrate. Let's see if lead nitrate is soluble or insoluble. All right, so it's got lead and it's got nitrate. And what we can see on this chart here is the nitrates are right there, and they're on the soluble side, and the lead appears here and here, and it's on the insoluble side. What we have to do, though, is we have to follow the arrows. Note that the lead here and here are dealing with when we're talking about chlorides, bromides, and iodides that have lead or sulfates that have lead. Not when we're dealing with a nitrate that has lead. When we're dealing with a nitrate, this arrow points towards the nitrate, indicating that all nitrates are soluble. There really aren't any exceptions. All right? So lead nitrate is going to be soluble because all nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. The arrow is pointing towards the nitrates. We kind of ignore these leads because they deal with other types of lead compounds. And we focus on the nitrate in this, this guy. All right, let's do another one. Let's do potassium chromate. Let's see if potassium chromate is soluble or insoluble. All right, so here we can see chromates are right here, chromate, CrO42 minus, and we see potassium right here. So look at this. Most chromates are insoluble. Oh, but we follow the arrow over, and the arrow says, but not if there's potassium included. So potassium chromate is going to be soluble. Okay, so again, we have another aqueous. So the key is here, start with the anion. If you start with the anion, this chart usually won't fail you. Okay, let's try another one. Let's do calcium sulfate. And this time, let's start with the ion. Let's ignore the cation for now. So sulfate, where do we find sulfates on this table? The bottom left, here's the sulfates. Sulfates are usually soluble. Things on the left side are soluble. But not if it is barium sulfate, lead sulfate, calcium sulfate, or strontium sulfate. So there we go. We have an insoluble uh, version of a sulfate because this sulfate is bonded to calcium, and therefore it's a solid. OK, let's do one more. Let's do barium phosphate. All right, we've got barium phosphate. Again, let's start with the anion this time, phosphate. Phosphates tend to be insoluble. So here's our phosphate, usually insoluble. Sorry, I've got it written on there twice, got a little typo. And let's follow it over. Barium phosphate would be insoluble, but it's going to be soluble if it's bonded to any of these cations, ammonium, lithium, sodium, potassium. But I don't see barium on here, so in this case, we've got another insoluble compound. Okay, I'm going to do one more because there's a little bit of a trick on this table. Let's try barium hydroxide. Okay, so the hydroxides are right next to the phosphates. They're usually insoluble. When we follow the arrow over, if we were talking about any of these hydroxides, lithium, sodium, potassium hydroxide, those would be soluble. And if we read this note, group two hydroxides are mostly soluble except for magnesium. So we got to bring out a periodic table and find where barium is. Sure enough, barium is group two. And so this would be mostly soluble because this is barium hydroxide. It's a group two hydroxide. It's mostly soluble. So we're going to go ahead and call this aqueous. And that ends up actually being one of our strong bases in this course. OK, so what do solubility rules have to do with anything? Solubility rules have to do with precipitation reactions. So pre precipitation reactions are when we take two aqueous solutions and when we mix these aqueous solutions together, these aqueous solutions contain ions. And so in this case, our ions, uh, we've got potassium ions. And here's the chromate ion. 
So we're going to be able to figure out what this, uh, what these two solutions are. This is potassium chromate, aqueous. So they're in the ion form. And then on this other guy, we've got lead, and we've got nitrate. Because this is a solution of lead, nitrate, aqueous. These are both aqueous. We just did examples of those in the solubility rules. What happens when we mix these two? We are going to form a precipitate. Nice yellow precipitate. And that precipitate happens because when we do this double displacement reaction, we switch partners. These ions switch partners. One of them ends up being, <coughs> excuse me, one of them ends up being insoluble. So let's figure out which one ends up being insoluble. So we get an insoluble precipitate. And our solubility rules will enable us to figure out what that insoluble precipitate is. So remember, we've got lead nitrate, aqueous, and potassium chromate, aqueous. And we then get products from a double displacement reaction. So we're going to switch the partners, cations go with the other anions, and we're going to figure out what products we end up getting, and then we'll be able to see which of these is insoluble. So when we switch these partners, the lead is going to go with the other anion, so we're going to get lead chromate, and the potassium is going to go with the other anion. We're going to have potassium nitrate. <clears throat> All right, so if we go back to our solubility rules, we're going to see that if you pull those solubility rules out, we're going to see the nitrates, remember, they're all soluble. All right, no exceptions. Potassium also mostly uh, soluble. <clears throat> so we've got soluble. And then when we see the chromates, the chromates are usually insoluble. And lead is not an exception to that insolubility. And so here, this ends up being our precipitate. And if you watched the previous tutorial on net ionic equations, you'd see that the net ionic equation for this is going to be the lead ion and the chromate ion forming the lead chromate solid. And there's your net ionic equation. All right, so that's how the solubility rules end up impacting precipitation reactions and help us to be able to predict precipitation reactions.